Hello everyone, I'm Beastly Eel, and in today's video we're going to be talking about the latest episode of Invincible. So in this episode there was a lot being covered, so please bear with me. One of the big things that I want to talk about, which might seem out of order, but I promise you it is not. Um, the big thing here is Rex was trying to build up his um, confidence back, so he's now back in the field after healing enough-ish. Um, and his first mission is attacking a bunch of squid creatures. Invincible tries to help him out, but Rex begs him, begs him to let him do it because in his mind, he needs this more than Invincible. So Invincible agrees, and Rex is throwing stuff and everything else, and then he realizes he has a wrist rocket type device that comes out of his wrist right here, um, charges it up with his energy, and blasts it. Um, at the large squid creature, which causes it to be knocked down. That's when at least Rex feels like he's finally getting his mojo back. So then we have um, Cecil um, and his number two really dealing with the fact of trying to understand what's going on. So his number two has died at least 32 times, specifically for the fact that um, every time he's come back, he, they keep all of his memories, and he eventually asks Cecil to remove his memories so he doesn't have to relive it anymore. Well, during this time, William, um, who is Invincible's roommate, um, his boyfriend is now back into the real world and is realizing that it's not what he thought it was, and his he doesn't feel like himself anymore. He feels like he was literally torn apart and put back together, which, in fairness, he actually was. So we have Cecil's second in command come in and basically talk to him before jumping to try to get him to not jump off the edge of a, of the school building. And one of the big things he says to him is he feels like he doesn't belong in this world because he's not fully put back together and there's pieces of him missing. And that's when Cecil's number two is basically like, hey, man, I do understand what you're going through. Um, and. William's boyfriend's kind of like, I don't believe you at all. And that's when Cecil's number two takes um, takes his jacket and button-down shirt off to show his gut, um, which opens up to a robotic armor. And he explains that he's died over 32 times and that he's thought for all those times that it was best to ignore it. Or let me rephrase it, forget it. And he'd ask Cecil to remove his memories. But realistically... What he's realized this time is every one of those lives, he's made the world just slightly better each and every time. And so because of that, he doesn't want to lose his memory anymore and wants to stay as remembering all of his past lives because that's what made him him. And that gets him off the edge. So then we have um, Cecil, and I'm sorry, that's a lie. We have Invincible and Amber dealing with their relationship, which is not going well. It's a rocky start to begin with, but Invincible convinces the Guardians to let him and Amber have a moment. Um, they had tried to originally go to the Comic-Con together, which didn't work out because he had to leave to help Rex out. Um, but on the second time, they went on a date. Um, I'm not quite sure where they were. I don't think they were on Earth. I'm on, They were on Earth, sorry. I don't think they were on uh, in the United States. And that's when a Viltrumite comes down, a female one, who was willing to snap Amber's neck unless Invincible went to go speak with her. So Mark, unfortunately, agrees um, as long as she was, as long as Amber was not hurt. So he goes to um, deal with the Viltrumite, and the two of them start to fight. Um, well, not really yet. They snow, they actually have a conversation first. Um, they try to save the Mark tries to save the people from this kraken like creature she then thinks he's taking too much time and blows through it without a problem and states that what the viltrumites want is the human race to be saved and that they can make sure that a lot of human lives don't die and that mark's not seeing the big picture one of the big things she states is that he doesn't understand that his weakness is what's causing a lot of humans to die like even in the cruise ship there were a lot of humans that died that if she didn't get involved well, unfortunately, the entire um, ship could have been killed. And there would have been a lot of people dead because he was unable to do what he needed to do. So that's when he and her start to fight because she explains that the only way she'll leave is if he agrees to conquer the planet and then she will go. 
he disagrees. And that's when the two of them start to fight. And let me tell you, Cecil, on the other hand, is telling Mark to basically say, hey, like, just say the words, man. Just say the words that you're going to conquer, and we'll work this out together and try to figure out what needs to be done. And Mark, on the other hand, does not go with that plan whatsoever. So he takes a beating. He does hit her a couple of times, but isn't enough to do much damage to her. She's smacking him around like he's nothing, and she's ready to... Um, she puts his her foot on his throat and states that you are going to do what the Viltrumites want you to do. And he's like, make me. And uh, he calls her bluff and she's ready to snap his neck and she decides against it. Because he states that he knows that she needs him. That the Viltrumites need him to get Earth on their side. And that because of that, they would have, if they didn't, they would have already killed him. And that's one of the big things there. So, she then leaves. And states that the next person that comes back will not be as nice as she is. So she takes off. Cecil teleports in and is like very proud of Mark in the sense of like surprised that Mark stood his ground even though he was getting his butt kicked. And Invincible's like, you know what? We need to work together. Now, when he goes back to see Amber, Amber and him decide that they have to break up because they're worried about each other's safety. She's afraid that if they stay dating, she will be the reason that Mark turns evil. And he doesn't want them to be dating anymore because he thinks that if he stays dating with her, she's going to die. All of that happens, right? So then we have the interdimensional traveler. Um, apparently have Mark's mother, Debbie, and his brother, Oliver, um, captured and trying to get Invincible to, Invincible to come see him. That's the end of that part of the story. Then we have the Viltrumite that came to Earth, the female, going back into the main ship, explaining what was going on and that Mark was refusing to do so and that they're going to have to try to figure out a different way. And that's when the leader says that you obviously failed at that and that you um, obviously were feeling soft as well. So, during all of this, they realize that they find a creature, a.k.a. Alan the Alien, and she goes out to fight it. He gets punched in the face by her. He does not feel it as much as he thought he was going to. And then he begins to hit her, causing her to bleed. So then she explains that he, she will take him, when she beats him, to their scientists to basically dissect him to find out what makes him so strong. So she then hits him as hard as she can and knocks him out. Or so she thinks. Come to find out, he is not knocked out. And he's actually going along with this plan to see if he can get into the stronghold of the Viltrumites. Who knows what he's going to be doing there. So overall, that was the end of the episode. Um, definitely thought this was a good one. We only have one episode left of the season. And I'm very curious to how it's going to go. I'm assuming we're going to be more focused on the interdimensional traveler than we are going to be with the Viltrumites. But I do feel like we're going to have an end um, end credit scene where we see the Viltrumites side of things. Um, with Alan the Alien, which potentially could have him free Omni-Man. So I'm very curious at what happens there. Overall, I thought this episode was great. Let me know what you guys thought about this episode in the comments down below. Did you like it? Did you not? And why? And as always, if you like the content you see, please make sure to like and subscribe down below. Other than that, this is going to be Beast Eel signing out. Have a great night.